this video is going to basically be a tour of the Fantasy Grounds tabletop. And we're going to click on every single button. And I'm going to show you where everything is located. We're not going to go into massive detail. This is sort of like taking a tour if you're new to Fantasy Grounds and you have that that new car scent and you just kind of want to check everything out. Because all of these buttons can seem to be a little intimidating, but it's actually not. So we're just going to go ahead and, and, and dive right in. So the first thing that I always tell both players and Dungeon Masters is you need to take advantage of the macro bar down here at the very bottom. There's 12 slots, just what you can see. But you can also use the Alt, Control, and Shift buttons, and you can have a bunch of other macro bars come up. See, you can have Control 1 through 12, Alt 1 through 12, Shift 1 through 12, Control Shift 1 through 12, Control Alt 1 through 12. I think there's 96 possible macros that you can use. And, and you can take everything, any, anything that you want. Class information, images. If you're a player and if you're on a big map dungeon, you might want to take that, that map and, and drag it down to your macro bar. So, for instance, if you have, uh, we'll say that you have, a, let's see, a map. We'll just type in map. All right, we'll just take a random battle map. Up in the upper left-hand corner, this is for the 5th edition rule set, but this goes for any rule set or any kind of skin that you're using for Fantasy Grounds. Just take the little uh, the little pendant up here in the upper left, whether it be the dragon for 5e or, or a circular disc, whatever, just take that, hold down the left mouse click button, and take it down there and drop it right down in there. And, and you can see, wow, look at that, I put the battle map there. So as a player, you can easily refer back to that map. Or if you're a dungeon master, you can do that. You can store your uh, story journals here. So if you want to run Storm King Sunder, just take this, drop it down there. And anytime you want to run Storm King Sunder, just click it. And there's, there's your menu with all of the different chapters. Piece of cake. Definitely, everybody, utilize the macro bar down below. And you can delete these as well. You can right-click it. You can hit the skull and crossbones to clear the slot. You can rename it by hitting the little edit label button when the radial menu pops up. And you can just erase it. And if you just want to abbreviate it, just put STK if you don't want all that text. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to use, guys. And the more that you use this software, the more that you're going to become proficient with it and the more shortcuts and the more different ways you're going to learn of doing things. So, so that's the macro bar. You're going to notice that you have a pool of dice down here. These are all of your different dice. If you don't like the color of the dice, no problem. Just click on the color palette button up here in the right-hand color. You can hover over, and it will say colors. You can pop that up. You can click on the different buttons. You can kind of move things around. You can click on things. You can change the the numbers from black to white you can I mean there's there's all kinds of different ways you can darken each color you can make it brighter there's all kinds of things that you can do to change the colors of these dice which is actually really nice Ooh, look at that nice color I like that like a dark blackish green I think I'm gonna have to keep that so that's how you change the color of the dice now when you roll your dice make sure you roll it into the chat box. If you don't, it will not register the roll. Nobody else could see it that's in the game. So make sure you throw those 20s into the chat box. Now you can right click on each dice as well. And you can roll 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or even 20. Look at that. Look at that magic missile. 20d4. Nice. Now uh, you can also for the 10 sided, you can click on that. And you'll notice that there is a percentile. So you can roll a percentile dice. So wow, you rolled, just roll a four. If you basically just want to pick up a die, you can also hold down the left button and right click as many times as you want and just keep right clicking. And look at all those dice. You could just keep adding 20 sided. 
And I think we're just at about the max, which I have no clue how many 20-sided there are, but that is a pretty nice dice pool of 20s, and you can do that with any die. And look at that, 612. I think that's a hit, Dungeon Master. So that's your dice pool. Now, you're also going to have some uh, buttons down here in the lower left-hand corner. The first is going to be your modifier box. This is where you can add a positive or negative integer into the modifier box. So if you have, uh, say you have a plus five to your attack, just type in a five. You don't have to put, you don't have to put in plus five, just put a five. And then when you roll your 20 sided, it will take the five, add the eight plus the five for a 13. Uh, you will have to put in a negative. So if you have a negative five, you would do the same thing. Take your 20 sided and you would have a very bad roll at a negative three. So that is how to control and manipulate the dice, the modifiers. Now there's some other buttons and there may be more or less buttons depending on what you rule set you're using. For this instance, for this video, I am using the D&D 5th edition rule set. And there is advantage and disadvantage. Of course, if you play 5e, you know advantages, roll twice, take the best. And you can click that and roll it, it'll roll twice and take the best. So it'll take the 16 between the 16 and the 14. And there you go. Disadvantage works the same way. Roll twice, take the worst. So it looks like it'll take the two and leave the 16. There's also a plus two and a plus five box, a minus two and a minus five. So for instance, the plus five bonus that we just had, if you have a plus five, you don't even need to put it in the box. You can just hit the plus five button and roll the die and get the same result or the minus five or the minus two. Wow, I'm rolling really bad. It's actually, it's kind of hit and miss. Thank goodness we're not actually playing in a game because I'd be in real trouble rolling all these ones and twos. So there you go, There's we're, we're getting started. Let's talk about the chat box now. Now, if you're a dungeon master, you can clear the chat by typing in slash clear but before that, there's a bunch of commands that you can use in chat. And you can just uh, type in slash command, and it will pop up all of the different commands, the slash commands that you can use within the Fantasy Grounds chat box. There's a bunch of them. We're not going to go over each one, but you can check those out on your own. I'm just showing you that they're there because a lot of people actually don't even know that they're there. A lot of people dive into the product without even reading the instruction book. So this is sort of like a instructional book tutorial without all of the finite details and stuff. So you're going to notice that we have a, a nice image here of a scarecrow. Looks like a, a half-elf there, or maybe a human or, or maybe a gnome. You can change the, the decals depending on if, if the product actually has uh, decals. Now you'll activate those on the startup page in the campaign details section on the left hand side and it will say something like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Monster Manual, Desktop Decals. And every D&D 5e product has uh, several to choose from and the more of those extensions you add on the startup the more uh, different images that you're going to have to share with your players and you can switch it up. You know, uh, there's also some for Savage Worlds. There's some for Pathfinder. So basically, all of the official content that we have does have some type of background uh, decal that you can actually spruce up uh, your desktop, and you can change it around. Maybe you want to kind of give them some type of subliminal message of maybe an, an encounter that they're going to have, and you can put an image up there if you have it. So pretty cool. You can access the decals by clicking on the options button in the upper right hand corner, the cog wheel. You can click on that and just scroll down to where it says game, GM. Here is the desktop decal and you can just cycle through these and I'll kind of put this to the side and you can turn them off. You can have the Smiteworks logo, the short D&D logo, the long D&D logo and here's stuff from the monster manual. And that's the only one that I have activated. But there are a lot more, and you can activate those on the startup screen, like I mentioned just a few seconds ago. 
So now we've taken care of the macro button, all of the buttons on the left-hand side, the chat box. Let's look at one more thing in the chat box, which is a really nice feature called the language filter. Now the language filter is where you can throw your players that screwball or knuckleball, and you can cause this huh moment, <laughs> which, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, the language filter has a bunch of different symbols for languages, etc. And if your players, if any of your players speak Elvish, you can use the drop down box here to choose Elvish. And when you type in, this is a test, and can you hear this? And when you hit enter, it will put up all the Elvish text, and it'll say understood by so-and-so. So if one of your characters called Knucklehead can understand Elvish on their character sheet, then the sheet will basically, the, the chat will tell you that Knucklehead can understand Elvish. So you know that he can read, this is a test, and can you hear this? But all the other players, they're just going to see this you know, Elvish text that's put into the chat box, which is really nice. And there is a whole multitude of languages. There's more for D&D &D 5e <clears throat> than a lot of the other rule sets. But you can make your own as well. This isn't just to where... You have to have 5th edition. You can use this for other core RPG-based rule sets. So how you would access those would be to go to your cog wheel again in the upper right-hand corner, the options. And right here in the lower left-hand corner of the interface, it says Languages. And when you click on that, it's going to pull up the Languages interface. And you can see here's all of the, the languages that will be stored. Some rule sets may not have any. So you can go ahead and create your own. And you can just right click, hit the create button, or you can go to the edit list here and hit the green positive arrow or the green plus for add, add item. You can just add an item, name it, and then in the drop down box, choose what type of font that you want to use. So if you have something like Fey, if you want to have Fey language in your game, just type in Fey on the box on the line and then in the drop down box just choose elvish and then anytime your your speakers can, your your players can speak in that language you can also do it as a dm maybe they find some type of script that's carved into a tree in the forest that says if you read this fairies will attack you so if they read it you have an encounter fairies will attack pretty cool so that's how you use the language filter. And that's how you add languages as well. So let's start clicking on all of the buttons in Fantasy Grounds. And there's quite a few buttons. But like I said, don't be intimidated. Don't be scared. Everything is really easy to use. So we will start at the bottom. And we'll click on tokens. These are This is the area where all of your tokens are stored. And if you have a Fantasy Grounds one-time purchase license, or if you have a subscription, Fantasy Grounds has some free token packs for you that you can use. And a lot of people don't know that either. So what you want to do is open up your token interface, and you want to activate these token modules. And what you want to do is click on the Modules button here. And when you open up the Modules button, you will have as many token packs available to you as as you have available. Now, you know, I have a lot of token packs, so you're not obviously going to have all of these, but you can look for the ones that are uh, named Animal Pogs. You can load those. Animal Tokens, you can load those. Now, the tokens and the Pogs are the same thing, and they're beautiful tokens. Now the tokens are top-down tokens, sort of like a PNG Devon Knight type of token, and then the pogs are exactly as uh, as it sounds. It's the same top-down on a token. So you're going to get animals, and you're going to get character pogs. So you can load those, load uh, your character tokens. You're also going to get monsters, and you're also going to get letters as well. So you just Keep scrolling down until you find these. 
And believe me, we will find them. There they are. There's the monster pogs. Load those. Load the monster tokens. And then last but not least, let's look for the letters. I think I passed them, maybe? In fact, let's use the search box down below. So just type in letter. There we go. Letter tokens. Load those bad boys up. So you take advantage. If you have a lot of modules, take advantage of that search box down there. It will save you some time. So when you get those activated, close it out. And there's also some maps you can activate as well. And I'll show you those in just a second. Now look for the different bags. Here's the animal tokens. These are all the animal tokens that you get. You can zoom in with the zoom in button or the zoom out button. And these tokens are all clear top down. And when you drop them on a map, voila, they'll appear. Here's that same battle map that we have, which I should have used my macro. And just take the bear and, and put it on there. There you go. And then you got a bear on there. You can zoom in on the map and all that other good stuff using your mouse wheel. So those are your tokens. Now, what if you have your own tokens? Maybe you're an artiste and you create your own tokens. Well, that's okay. Because Fantasy Grounds allows you to put in your own tokens as well. Or maps or whatever. Now, to do that, you want to open up the GM button. When you click the GM button, your Fantasy Grounds data folder will open, the token uh, folder will open, and you basically just drag and drop those tokens, whatever you want in there, and then whenever you open up your token bag again, there you go. So I've added all of these gray-based Devonite tokens. These are all Devonite tokens for the most part. And I literally added bases onto every one of them uh, because that's just the way that I like. I like that type of old school look where it actually looks like a miniature. So I added bases. I added those in, and I can access those anytime that I want to, and not have a problem. And there's also a a store button here too. And when you open up the store, it will actually take you to our Fantasy Grounds store and it'll bring you right to the token section and you can scroll through and look at all the different token packs that we have available for purchase. Just make sure to run an update whenever you purchase a token pack because it won't show up automatically. You'll have to go back, you'll have to close down your game, you'll have to go back to the starting screen and you will have to run an update. Piece of cake, just a click of a button. So that's your tokens. Next, let's look at the, the library. Uh, this is where all of your modules that you purchase from the Fantasy Ground store, a lot of the, the free SRD content is located here for D&D 5th edition. And this is where you activate everything that you want to use, and you can also give access to your players, which is a really nice thing. So there's, there's some buttons here first. Now, you'll notice when you click on the library button in the lower right-hand corner, and the library interface opens up. There are some buttons here. We're going to go over these. Now, in this top portion, you're going to notice that these little icons look like the same buttons that are on the right-hand side. These are your sidebar buttons. And default, there's probably about six to eight buttons up there, predominantly just for players. But if you're a, if you're a DM, you can set uh, as many of these buttons, sort of like an a la carte, where you can just click the radio buttons here. So whatever you want to show up in GM mode, just click GM mode, and you can see I, I, I have just a few buttons. But if I'm DMing or GMing, I want all of the buttons available. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of the radio buttons. And you can see as I click each radio button, it will add another button to my interface. So there's GM mode. I have everything available to me. But say that I'm in player's mode, right? Maybe I'm, I'm a player tonight and I'm playing in a one-shot. So I'll click on player and I can add whatever I want. So maybe I'll, I'll have characters for sure. I'll have backgrounds. I'll have classes. I won't need encounters. I want feats. I don't need parcels. I don't need NPCs because I'm not you know, making any encounters. I want my notepad. I want the items. Uh, I don't... Uh, yeah, we'll keep images and maps. Quests I don't need. Yeah, maybe we'll say that we have quests. Uh, races, I want that. I want skills. I want spells. Uh, I don't really need the story, and I don't need tables. So I can 
put as many buttons as I want to. Create PC is the same thing. Uh, you can put as much as the player content on you there, or if you want to go ahead and click the, the all button, it'll add all of them. Now, there's going to be a lot of these question marks here in the upper right-hand corner on a lot of the interfaces. When you click on those, it's going to take you to our fantasygrounds.com wiki, and it will have a lot of information detailing you how to use this particular portion of the program. So if you have any questions, click on those exclamation points. Uh, not exclamation points, why? Question marks. Because you can get all that information from the Fantasy Grounds Wiki, like I said. So now let's take a look at uh, the panels here. Now, the panel here on the left, these are all of my activated modules. All right? And you have to manually activate those. And to activate those... First off, here's another store button. So if you're in the library, maybe there's a, a module that you're looking for. Oh, maybe I want to run Storm King Sunder. You can just click on the store button. It'll pop up another browser link, and then you'll be at the Fantasy Ground store, and then you can use the search however you want to search by product. To activate a module in the lower left-hand corner, click on modules, okay? And when you open that up, it's going to open up the data module activation. These are all of the modules that you have. Now, you can purchase modules from the Fantasy Grounds store, or you can create your own and export those. We won't be talking about exporting modules. That is going to be for another time. That'll be another video. But everything that you purchase, after you purchase something from the store or from Steam, you run an update, it adds the module into your data module activation. So I told you that Fantasy Grounds comes with certain things. So uh, it comes with the uh, D Dungeons & Dragons 5e basic rules. So you can look for, you can look for the basic rules for players or DMs, or you can use the search box down there at the very bottom and you can just type in basic rules or whatever uh, it also comes with some maps uh, so let's look for the maps let's just type in map and it'll narrow it down so here we go look for FG battle maps I've already got it loaded because there's actually a lot of really nice maps in there so once you have that loaded go ahead and load up your if you're using the D&D 5e stuff, go ahead and load up the basic rules. And then you can also load up the SRDs as well. You get three SRDs that have some classes, some races, some spells, some feats, uh, equipment. There's an SRD for monsters. Uh, and there's also an SRD for magic items from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Now, take note that... These SRDs do not have all of the content, 100% of the content that would be in the core books like the Player's Handbook, the Monster Manual, the Dungeon Master's Guide. It's just going to have some of it. Not all the copyrighted stuff, basically. And there will also be no art in the SRDs. But if you want the full Monty of D&D 5e, uh, I really recommend uh, getting the Player's Handbook Monster Manual from the store. But however... You know, the, with the flexibility of the program, you can also input all of that data too. It'll take you a lot of time, and it'll save you a little bit of money. But to me, to save time, uh, and the investment is is well worth uh, picking up the modules. But you have that option to enter all of the data yourself, and you can enter. You can just use the SRDs. So here they are. So load the bestiary SRD, load the data SRD with the races and classes, and here's the magic items. And whatever's not in these SRDs, you can manually add it. So if the beholders aren't in the bestiary SRD, you can add those. If the displacer beast, any copyrighted name by Wizards of the Coast won't be in there. So you can add those things in there. So that's the great thing about the flexibility of Fantasy Grounds. So that's how you load your modules. Now the last thing I want to show you is you'll see all of these red X's and these green check marks. Now that's to allow your players access to that content. So you can see here that I have a, uh, a 5e Conditions and Effects by Rob Tui. I have that activated. 
Uh, I have it loaded up already, which will show up in your uh, effects button over on the upper right hand corner, which these are all really easy to use drag and drop. So if you have something that gives you plus AC, or if you have something that will give you a negative modifier to AC, you just take those and drop them on your token on the map or into the combat tracker. Super easy, and it saves you a lot of time. And I, I believe that this is something that's on the DM's guild as well. So it's it's a it's a really nice uh, tool to have. Uh, now you'll notice that I have that with a green check mark. That means that all of my players can activate that. They have access to that. But now take into consideration. Here we have uh, a D and D five E module called Thief Thief in the Night. I have the red X there. That means that my players can't access that, so they don't even know that I have it. And you can do this by, in the lower left-hand corner, by picking up either the red X or the green check and just dropping it right onto the, the hex that's there. So a lot of this stuff, by default, will already have red and X. We've already taken, that care of, we've already taken care of that for you, but you can also change them anytime that you want. So pretty much anything that says Players Guide or anything, we'll do a search for Players you'll notice that all of these pretty much have green check marks unless like some of these I actually put red X's on because I didn't want my players to have uh, access to them so there you go everybody that's 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 data module activation that's activating your modules when you get your modules uh, all activated you can just X out of this and now they'll appear here in your panel and there will be categories and stuff so here's our 5e srd that we activated and here's our maps that we activated now if you want to look at the maps just click on this and then the larger panel on the right it will pop up all of the different options that you can look and here here you go this is actually the same doing the same as clicking the images and maps sidebar button and to me and like I said, there's many ways to do things in Fantasy Grounds. A lot, there's a lot of things where there's just not way to, one way to do it. And this is one example of that. It's just whatever your preference is. So if you want to look at your images and maps, you can access them from your library. Or just as easy, you can just click on the, the images and maps sidebar button. That way you don't have to mess with going in and fiddling around with everything in your library. <clears throat> so, and you just start clicking on these battle maps. Really nice. Really, really nice. Makes it easy. So here's our here's our bestiary. The NPCs, same thing. You can access those to the library, or you can just go over here to NPCs and click it, and you can access them here as well. I like using the sidebar button because the sidebar button has a lot of great ways to search for your monsters and we'll go on that just in just a second so that's how you access your content that's how you activate modules that's how you basically add more sidebar buttons you can you know do these to whatever you want either in gm mode players mode or you can have them all turned on and also i've showed you how to share the content with your players or block it to where they can't even see it so that is the library now we're going to go with the skills. Now skills are depending on what game you're playing. And so the skills will be different for every rule set. And this, when you click on the skills button, this is for 5e. Some rule sets may not even have skills. So it just depends on the rule set that you're using. Uh, for this instance, uh, here's all the different skills in 5th edition. Everything from acrobatics all the way down to survival. You can use the search button down here below. You can also use the group drop down box up here. So if you want to use just the skills in the player handbook, you can go ahead and do that and, and it'll it'll basically categorize that down and narrow it down to just the skills in the player's handbook, which they're pretty much the same through every single uh, uh, resource in 5e. And if you want to create a skill, maybe you want to add Streetwise, because Streetwise is not in D&D 5e. Or maybe you want to add Dungeoneering. You can add skills, too. I mean, you, it's, it's easy. And that's the thing about the not only the D&D 5e rule set, but the Pathfinder, the Savage Worlds, all of our rule sets, you can add your own content. 
which is beautiful. And you can do that by just clicking it, right clicking in the interface, hitting create item, or just going down here to the little dialog box that says start editing and it's the edit list button. You can just open it up and you can create one. So if we wanna create a new skill, just click on that and just type in streetwise. There you go. And you can add in all of your, this is the, the new skill I want. And you can add as much text as you want. Lock it up with a little lock here or leave it unlocked. And voila, now you'll see that Streetwise is in here. Perfect. So that's how you create a custom skill. And like I said, there may be a skill box, there may not be a skill box. It all depends on what rule set that you're using. Spells are the same way, everybody. Spells are the same way. On the right-hand side, you can see where this spell came from. So you can see that Acid Splash came from the player's handbook, and Acid Splash came from our SRD data that comes with every license. Here's uh, Agonazar's Scorcher. It was in the D&D Elemental uh, Player's Companion. Alarm is in the Player's Handbook Deluxe, the SRD data. You've got the idea by now. There is a, a button down here that you can cycle through every page, which there's nine pages of spells. And if you do have the player's handbook, there's really no need for you to have the SRD data activated. Because like I said earlier, everything that's in the SRD data is in the player's handbook, and you really don't need to have both uh, activated. It will just take some of these out of the, out of the spell sidebar button. So you can also search for these uh, by typing in the name. You can search by spell level. You can search if it's a ritual or not, or what type of source, whether it's a cleric spell, a mage spell, a bard spell, etc. And every rule set may or may not have a, uh, a spells. Races are the same way. It has all of the different sources, and you can just click on the, the red dragon heads and it'll it'll open up everything that uh, has to do with the goliath here you can open up and drag these boxes around and resize them as large or as small as you want and you can use the drag handle down here in the lower right or like what i like to do i like to hold down control and just anywhere just click around and resize it as large or small as you want but i always hold down control it's just a lot easier to do that there's a search, a search box there. Uh, so that's races, feet, so the same way. And you'll, you'll notice that there are still these question marks. And you can click on anything, and it'll, it'll take you right to information from the Fantasy Grounds Wiki. So there's all kinds of knowledge available to you at your fingertips. So there's feats. Classes work the same way. Pretty much all of the different buttons work that way. There's backgrounds, there's parcels. Now parcels, will will I'll talk to you a little bit about parcels. Now parcels are pretty much for dungeon masters use. I, I, I would probably be safe to say that. Uh, unless you have your player running your game, which I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, so your parcels are gonna have your loot in them. And depending on, you know, if you create your own encounters, you'll have to create an item parcel. And I have a video for that that you can watch as well. It's in the, the tutorial playlist or guides playlist. Uh, but every module that you have activated will show up here in parcels. So you can see I have Storm King's Thunder activated. So all of these are, you know, we take care of all of the legwork for you when you purchase a module from the Fantasy Ground store. So all of the, you know, the 20 gold that you get, the pouch, the common clothes, the five vials of holy water, or that magic item, that holy Avenger longsword that you get, all of those items will be in the parcels. And you can see every parcel is different. And every parcel is from that particular encounter. So you can see that every parcel is different. And those are great. And I'm gonna show you how to use these parcels in just a second because with the party sheet, you can go ahead and distribute this treasure to everybody in your party and they don't have to type anything. All you have to do is just hit 
distribute and it'll put the it'll divide the money evenly it will add whatever item that you want to go to that person or if you keep the items in the in the party sheet your players can drag and drop that stuff on their sheet if they want something which i do in my games all the time i just put everything in there and i let my players fight over it so well they don't fight over it but you get you get the idea so parcels, these are all uh, pre-made item parcels from adventures. And like I said, there's a video that shows you uh, how to create an item parcel. Items are the same way. This is, this is pretty much all of your, your armor, weapons, everything's in alphabetical order. There's 20 pages worth. You can use the, the buttons down here navigation buttons to rifle through all the different pages. You can use a search. You can use the item type. You can use the drop-down group box, depending on what source you're pulling from. Uh, you can also uh, search by armor or weapons up here. We have added a couple buttons to make it easy for you. So here's all of the armor. Here's all of the weapons. And this is for D&D 5th Edition, guys, because I am using the 5th Edition rule set, like I said. Uh, here's templates that you can create. And the great thing about the 5e rule set you can create your own custom magic items. And this is uh, currently for the 5th edition rule set, and I believe it's going to be added into a couple other rule sets as well down the line. Uh, but as of right now, you can create items with the Forge. And this is something that you know was approved from Wizards of the Coast, uh, etc. So if you want to take, you know, you open up the Forge here, just click the Forge button, and it'll open up the interface. And you can take a template and a piece of equipment and create a magic item. But just make sure when you do this, and there's also a tutorial on how to create uh, magic items as well. So you take your templates, you can add as many templates in there that you want and add an item in there. But just make sure you add all of the armor templates on a piece of armor. You can't take armor templates and put it on a magic, like a ma on like a sword or something. It just won't work. It'll it'll error out and it'll tell you you can't make this item. So yeah, you want to make sure all of your armor templates go on a piece of armor, or all of your weapon templates go on a weapon, and then hit the forge ma magic item, and voila, you got a magic item. So pretty cool. So take advantage of uh, creating some custom items and maybe even let your players do that. That would be pretty fun too. But you know the players would probably put like 10 things on one piece of armor. So you, you got to keep an eye on them. You got to keep an eye on them. So that's all of the items. Now let's go to uh, encounters. Encounters are going to work the same way as the uh, parcels. And these are all pre-made encounters. And you can see that these are pretty much all from Storm King Sunder. So we'll open up a couple different encounters. This is a good one from the Howling Hatred. So there, you know, and it'll tell you every single creature that are in these parcels. And these are all drag and drop. You put those into the combat tracker. Uh, or if you if you have them populated to a map, which these are, if you see a check mark, that means that those are on the map. But if you're using the module, it will have this encounter on the story tab for that particular encounter anyway. So you won't have to open up the encounter sidebar button like I'm showing you. It will already be there. And then you just open up the encounter and check this out. You open up your combat tracker, which is where uh, a lot of the magic happens for Fantasy Grounds. The swords that are crossed in the upper right hand corner, that's your combat tracker. Now check this out. Hit the generate encounter. And we'll do that. Add the encounter. You press the button. Look at that. It rolls initiative automatically. You don't have to drag and drop those creatures in there. It adds them in there for you automatically. And it also, seeing that there's the check marks here, you have your map open. Voila, your tokens appear on the map as well. So you can create these yourself, and you can drag and drop as many monsters as you want. You can pre-place these on maps. There's a tutorial on how to do this as well. And it makes Fantasy Grounds makes running a game so easy for the Dungeon Master, especially when you buy the, the pre-made content. You don't have to put all the encounters together, the item parcels, and all. Everything is already done for you. Everything is just drag and drop, and it makes your life easy 
as a dungeon master or game master. So that's the encounters. NPCs are all of your monsters, and everything is A to Z, and you can see that we have lots of monsters, 14 pages of monsters. Don't forget down to hold down control, and you can resize this or use the drag uh, bar down here in the lower right-hand corner. You can resize it that way. There's a, a very nice search uh, way to search for monsters. You can just type in the name. You can also go ahead and search by CR, which CR is for D&D 5e. Uh, and like, like I said, every rule set is different but there are monsters or NPCs, and you can search for those in these rule sets. Now, there's the group category drop-down box. Say I want to just use something out of the monster manual. I would just use the group drop-down, select monster manual, and you can see, voila, here's everything from the, the monster manual, five pages worth of creatures. Or you can just go back, and it will basically pull data from everything that you have activated in your library into this sidebar button. And then you can also search by letter, which it'll pop up a, an interface, everything A to Z. So here's everything A's. Here's CR. It'll have everything from uh, CR 1 eighth or whatever it is all the way up to, to or CR 0 all the way up to, what, 25 or 26. Or you can search by monster type, which is beast, aberration, fiend, demon, devil, etc. So those are your NPCs. So you can ser easily search with your uh, NPCs. Quest, uh, quests are the same thing. It works the same way as your item parcels and your monster parcels. They'll drag and drop into the party sheet where you can actually distribute XP to where you say, okay, congratulations, uh, folks. You finished the quest. You beat the fairy when you when you read, you know, if I read this aloud, the fairies will attack me in the force. Remember we're talking about uh, the language filter? We'll say you completed that quest. You could take that, put it into the party sheet, distribute the XP, and it'll divide it evenly uh, with everybody that is in the, the party sheet, basically. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So that's, that's quest. You can search with the group. You can search by name down there at the bottom. You can also create your own quest, and you create your own quests the same way as everything else, just by right-clicking or opening up the edit. Now, the story, this is where a lot of the, the data is stored for modules, and you can open these up this way. You can drag and drop this, hold down Control, Search, same thing. There are templates. If you hit the templates, some of the modules that we sell do have story templates. And these are really nice because these are great to create things on the fly. So let's let's uh, go ahead and, and let's pull something out from uh, Volo's guide. Let, let's 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 do a Cobalt template. All right. This is this will be good. So you click on Cobalt template. And here's everything. It'll, it'll give you a name. It'll give you what color his scales are, his height, and his weight. So you can, with the click of a button, instantly just hit this generate button. Voila, it'll open up a story tab, and it just created a kobold for you. His name is Taklak. Great kobold name, actually. He's uh, got brown scales. He's 32 inches tall, and he's 55 pounds. He's a chunky little kobold. And you can create as many of these as you want to. You can you can generate as many, and it's all it's all RNG, all random. But the templates will show up only with the modules that you have activated. So this that is uh, your quest. That's your story, and you can create story tabs as well. You can create story story journals. Right click. Hit create item or use the edit list button down here and you can create more. You can delete them. You can do whatever you want. Here's tables. These are all rollable tables. Fantasy Grounds, you can create rollable tables or you can you can go ahead and use the tables that are in all of the, the different uh, books. So here's uh, here's barracks and we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll... This is pretty much for generating loot. So all you have to do is just roll this into the chat. You can drag and drop it, or you can click it, and it will output it into a loot parcel. And this barrack had a lot of gold, 700 gold and 1,600 silver. And it's also, if you have this unlocked, you can open up your items, 
and you can drag and drop items in here too and you can you can continue to add stuff in here look at that isn't that beautiful it's so simple to create parcels I mean it's folks it's so simple uh, it, it's just amazing so that is tables and you can share the tables with your players by right clicking on them and hitting sharing you can share maps and images like what I'm fixing to show you so you can share those they can roll them they can roll their own loot so let's next let's go to maps and images and there's a maps and images in every single fantasy grounds rule set as there uh, is with the tables and the story tab the quest tab etc now like I said you know some things may be a little bit different like classes or races or skills or spells or feats so like I said it just depends on the rule set so here's these images and maps you can access the store by clicking on the store page it'll bring you right up to the fantasy ground store and like I said you can go right here's all the maps and you can just scroll through the pages of maps that are for sale uh, you can also add maps like I said you can click on the folder button and it'll open up your your data folder and you can add all kinds of maps now just take into consideration when you add maps it's only for that particular campaign that you are open for well that you have open so if you add your forest map for your fairy encounter it will only be for this campaign but if you want that map in another campaign when you have that campaign open you'll have to add that map in there as well so there may be something in the future added to where you can share between campaigns uh, but that's uh, but that's gonna be down the line and that is on the uh, on the want to do list but uh, that will happen down the line so those are your images and maps and you just open them up uh, you have you know you can unlock the map here and you can edit it you can draw on it just by clicking on the the button but when unity comes out which we don't have a date for uh, we're still working on it we're still developing it there will be a lot more uh, a lot more like rich text editor types of options to where you can do a lot of text uh, different brushes you can actually uh, you can see some fantasy grounds videos that we've had where you can actually create a cave with walls and shadows and oh yeah it's gonna be crazy look at those videos for unity too but we don't have a release date yet so don't worry about asking in the comments because it's it hopefully we're hoping for something sometime this year uh, you can also click the eraser and you can erase everything like that pretty nice uh, there's also the mask mode where you can click this and wow there's fog of war fog of war means that your players can't see the map now but when you're when you have your mask mode enabled you can do a couple of things you can drag and open up the map that way so now your players can see this area of the map but everything else is blacked out or you can hold down the shift button and you can draw a little bit more uh, defined I guess you could say it so you can open up this area down here and say oh you can see this right here but with fantasy grounds unity there's gonna be shade there's gonna be a line of sight there's gonna be all kinds of new animated features where you can have your map have rain or wind or snow or little twisters going all over the place the possibilities are endless and there will be animated maps when fantasy grounds unity comes out and we've got some videos on the YouTube channel that does show that and then you can delete the the, the map this way as well you can delete the uh, fog of war just by clicking on the layers and then just delete the mask and voila now there's a bunch of features that you can also uh, do with the map you can add a grid uh, like I said you can share the map by right clicking hitting sharing a couple times you can draw a pointer so if you wanna have a 15 foot cone you can draw a 15 foot cone voila you can add a grid just hit layers set a grid zoom in and watch how easy it is to make a make a grid here in fantasy grounds wow look at that just scroll out and your grids perfect <laughs> it, it's not a mess like in other other tabletops trying to line up a, a grid so and then if you want to you know when you have your grid down you can do a 
20 foot circle and you can see that you can just keep expanding it out and there's your 20 foot circle for your fireball or whatever spell voila bam the color of the circle is the color of your dice so take that into consideration and there's also a tool that is called the toggle grid toolbar to where you can take this grid and move it to the right move it to the left you can move it up you can move it down or you can increase it by one pixel or you can decrease it by one pixel so there is a, a nice map making tool in there as well so that's images and maps now here are the uh, the notes these are these are good to have for your players they can create those they can type in uh, Dave's notes and then they'll be the only one that can see it I can only see this unless they click the public button and then if they click the public button then everybody can read the notes so those are the notes so you can right click and add or you can go ahead and hit the edit list button and like I said everybody this is basically in every single rule set and last but not least here are your PCs these are all of your player characters that you've created or you can import character sheets or you can export those so just right click you can create or you can go as a DM you can clear the owner or you can delete a character or you can go ahead and take the ownership as a DM yourself if you want to if you're missing a player just right click take ownership now there's a uh, ways that you can import and export like I said go into the edit list button down here in the bottom and then you can hit the green one if you want to add another character if you want to import hit the blue arrow facing up this allows you to import a character very easily you just go and it'll open up your wherever you have your character stored if it's on the desktop in a folder uh, or if you want to export them on each character you can hit the down blue arrow that's to export and it opens up wherever you want to export this on the on the desktop in a folder wherever so you can import export or create so those are all the buttons for the actual virtual tabletop now let's take a look at uh, the other smaller buttons up top so let's go ahead and uh, delete all that yeah, we'll keep our kobolds in there we'll keep that encounter now like I mentioned we already took a look at the effects and the effects will be different for every single game you know sometimes they're called conditions sometimes they're called something else so you won't see all of these effects say in Savage Worlds or in Pathfinder there will actually be quite a few more for Pathfinder and a, a lot less in Savage Worlds and like I said you can create your own or you can create modules of these if you want to and then activate them like I showed you the Rob 2e uh, module that we activated with all of the D&D 5th edition and that puts them all in order you can right click you can create your own custom uh, effects as you want now this next button here the plus and the minus these are modifiers and this is a really nice box where you can right click, right click, create modifiers, whatever you want to. You can create those there. Here is a uh, question mark button where you can read about modifiers. There you go, and it shows you how to make them. Uh, this goes into much more detail than what I'm going to. I'm just basically showing you guys the option here. Now there's uh, some things here that to where this is in every single rule set as well. So if you have a crit shot, you can click critical and then it'll roll critical damage you can do max damage or half damage cover superior cover plus two plus five minus five you know stuff like that uh, opportunity attacks you can click, click that and you know like I said these may be different depending on the rule set now here's your cog wheel these are all of your options that you can turn on and off in fantasy grounds <clears throat> and what I recommend you doing if you are a dungeon master you can also click the the question mark here for the wiki and it will literally tell you every single thing that you can click on and turn on and off this is a beautiful resource so if you're a DM I suggest you opening up the wiki taking a look at that and then also log into your own game with an with your same license and when you when you lo log into your own game 
just start another version of Fantasy Grounds, and I'll do that for you, and I'll show you how to do that really quick. But there's also a video that shows you how to do this too. And when you go to Join Game, just go ahead and type in your username as whatever you want, and then in Host Address, type Localhost one word l-o-c-a-l-h-o-s-t and when you do that when you hit join game it will join another version of fantasy grounds into your game which will be in players mode to where you can kind of check it out all of the options with the combat tracker the optional rules and you can test all of this out to your liking on how you want to present this to your players so the options definitely take a look at all of this we've i've already talked about the languages uh, there's a bunch of house rules depending on the rule set that you have as well so if you want to go ahead and and turn on uh, let's see healing variants you can do that you can do max heals or you can roll you can do healing surges there's all kinds of different ways you can do the optional dungeon master's guide movement so you can go you can turn that on so then on the map, instead of being 5, it'll go 5 foot, 10 foot, 5 foot, 10 foot for all diagonal movement. So you can turn that on. You have that option. If you want to re-roll initiative every round, you can go ahead and turn that on, which is nice. That adds a lot of flavor into a game. Uh, you can, for your monster hit points, you can do max hit points, you can roll them, or you can do the standard. So check out the options. It has everything in here. And another cool thing is item identification. Uh, a lot of people don't know about item, item identification, so if you get that Warple Sword from that fairy encounter or that Holy Avenger, your, it will show up as identi unidentified to those players until you literally click it click it and say it's not so let's go ahead and I'll show you what I mean really quick by that in fact we'll wait and do that in the item in the in the parcel that I'm going to be showing you how to to do here so those are the options take advantage of those another thing for ambience that kind of sets the mood for your game uh, like the language filter this is the day and night toggling so it's default on day and when you hit the the moon button look at that it kind of the ambience takes it down to a dark so your players will see this as well and and the first time that you do that they'll say oh wow what is that dungeon master dave and you'll be like oh it's nighttime now and you're in the forest and the crickets are making sounds you can hear a werewolf howling into the distance what do you do you know and you can kind of set the mood that way or maybe you're sitting around the campfire and the party members are telling stories you can change the ambient lighting to that. Or maybe you're in that forest with the fairy encounter. You can also do that, and it'll, it'll make it like a, like a darker green. So there's all, all kinds of ways to change the ambience for your players. And they'll really appreciate it when you use this also. We've already taken a look at the, uh, the color palette here. I call it the Bob Ross color palette. You can change the color of the dye. You can make them darker, lighter. You can go ahead and change the, the text. There's a question mark on how to, how to do that, too. Here's a calendar, and the calendar is exactly what it says. There's all kinds of calendars. There's extensions for calendars that you can find on the Fantasy Grounds forums, all kinds of community-made stuff, and even some modules come with calendars that you will have to activate in your data module activation which we've already looked at so you can have all the different types of calendars from castles and crusades or advanced dungeons and dragons or Eb eberron or whatever there's all kinds of calendars for whatever game that you're playing now the last two are the bread and butter of fantasy grounds well i think so so here's your party sheet your party sheet does a lot it, it is a dungeon master's best friend it really is uh, there's four tabs on the right hand side there's your main tab this is where this is very important the party sheet will not work unless you have your players in the party sheet so let's go ahead and open up our pcs and we're going to drag we'll drag breeze in here we'll drag gilby rock nuts we'll drag uh war nerve and we'll drag crunk so now we got four people in our party sheet so that means these people will have access to the treasure, to the experience that's distributed. They can drag and drop items out, etc. So that is the, the main tab. 
And you can see that here's a bunch of options for, for their abilities, a couple of bars for their hit points, their hit dice heals, saving throws. You can, ma you can manually do them uh, on your own instead of asking them. Uh, here's the inventory tab. You can see that here's the party inventory for coins. Here's everybody's coins. So you can see if people are trying to pull one over on you and trying to add coins onto their sheet or if they're trying to add treasure or something like that. I'm not saying your players will do that, but you can actually look. Instead of opening up your character sheets, you can just look. Hey, Krunk has 15 gold. Breeze has four, 422 gold. They're both level one. What's going on here, Breeze? Something like that. And it gives you the total here too, which is really nice. So you can kind of gauge to say, okay, maybe I'll offer them something from a traveling merchant to do some economy control and get rid of all that gold or all that copper or whatever. And then on the right-hand side, here's all of the items. You know, arrows, Krunk's got one batch of 20. Breeze has got two batches of 20 for a total of three. Really nice. It does every single item. And just like the other windows, you can drag it that way with the, with the handles, or you can use the control button like, like what I do. I recommend using the, uh, the control button. So that's the inventory tab. Now let's go ahead and drag a, a parcel, one of those parcels we were talking about, right? Let's say that we, you know, decide we finish the quest. So we have this uh, quest parcel from Morak. All we have to do is take this and drag and drop it over into the parcel. And look at that. It adds the chainmail, the dwarven helm, the gemstones, and the potion of heroism, and the 45 gold. Perfect. You don't need to open. You can close that out. You can even close this out. Now, to distribute the coins, just hit the, the chevron that's facing down, the arrow facing down, and watch in the chat. Let's clear up the chat with a slash clear so you can see this. Now, watch. Look at that. No items were assigned because I didn't assign them to anybody, but the coins were distributed, and it divides it evenly, 11 gold to each party member. And then you can look on their sheet. They'll have 11 more gold. Perfect. Isn't That makes it so easy. Uh, for item distribution, your players don't have to, you know, sometimes your players aren't paying attention or something. Maybe they'll forget about the treasure, but hey, you can add it yourself. Items are the same way. Uh, you can go ahead and type, say you want the chain mail to go to, uh, we'll say you want it to go to Warner. So it is case sensitive. So make sure you do a capital W and it'll auto fill it for you. And then just hit the down chevron again. And then look at that. It disappears out of the parcel, and it says distributed to whoever. You know, distributed to wherever. It'll say it in the chat. And your players, say your players, say that I'm on Breeze here. You can go to your inventory tab, and you can, okay, I like that potion of heroism. I think I'm going to put that on my sheet. So I also told you about unidentified items, too. So if you have unidentified items turned on, which we will turn on in the options right now. So let's turn items on. So when item identification is on, look at that. If it's un I oh, I accidentally clicked it one other time on accident. Item identification is on. So you'll notice when you open up each item, there will be a little symbol. And if it's unidentified, it'll have the red Ghostbusters type of symbol in there, and it'll say item not identified. So if the player says, okay, I like that potion, I like the color of it or whatever, and there's a description on it with a blue liquid, okay, I'm going to take this potion. And he just takes it, uh, actually, you just take it from out of the party sheet, and look at that, it disappears out of the party sheet, goes on to your, your uh, character sheet, and then you have a, should be a, a potion, so you open up the potion. He's like, wow, I don't, I don't know what it is. We're going to have to take a long rest. I'm going to have to identify it. And then once the player identifies it, you can go ahead as the DM, click that off, and then now it says identified, and it's got a green circle around it. And then it says potion of heroism. So, yeah, really cool. And identification is for all of the different rule sets also. So that's how you add a, you know, just showing, how that, and you can create your own parcels and whatnot. The order tab, basically you can just take your, your tokens and, and ask your players to 
where are they at in marching order, et cetera. If you're playing like Theater of Mind or something, we, we can say that uh, we'll say that uh, Crunk is first, and then we'll have Breeze second, or maybe even Breeze wants to go first because he's trying to find traps and stuff. And then this also has a uh, a nice little pencil that you can kind of draw, like here's a hall, and then maybe up here it goes left. So you can play Theater of Mind like that too. Or maybe it goes right. And then there's also an eraser as well. So pretty cool. So you can kind of have a, a nice way to, oh, no, I was first, or no, you were first. But if they, you know, if all the players go to the order tab, they put their tokens in order. There's no disputing it. Voila, take advantage of the order sheet. And then there's a couple of extensions as well that you can download that will add nice grass graphics or a dungeon graphic for you, etc. Or a campsite. Last but not least is the XP tab that's in the party sheet. There again, you can take your quest, you can take your encounters, you can set those into the appropriate boxes down here. You can see who is in the party sheet. You can see how much experience they have. So Breeze is level four with, uh, I think these numbers may be wrong, but 45 is 65, but you get the idea. Now let's add a couple of these parcels. First, I told you that there are some quests, depending on the modules that you are playing you can create quest and we'll say that uh, bounty hunting we did the bounty hunting so you can unlock that and you can say this was worth 500 experience sometimes there will be a number in there sometimes you just want to give them experience i mean why not you're the dungeon master you can do whatever you want pick up that bounty hunting out of the quest sidebar button or just pick up that little red dragon drag it right over there to the bounty hunt uh, drag it right over into the quest box there you go you've got that quest now we want to add in an encounter as well let's do this encounter where you can just drag and remember we've already generated it it adds initiative etc now all we have to do is just drag this into the encounters and you can see that the bounty hunting is worth 500 and the Howling Hatred uh, encounter was challenge rating 7 for a group and worth 2875. So we've got four players that just went through these two encounters. They did the Howling Hatred and they did the bounty hunting by killing all the monsters. Let's award them some experience. Just click on the award button and then watch in chat as I clear it out and watch the numbers on the character sheets as well. So let's award the Howling Hatred. Voila, bam, look at that. Everybody got 719 apiece. And look at that. It added 719 on to the 4,500 4, Breeze already had. 719, 719, 719. Look at that. That's beautiful. And then you can see that there's an AW that says awarded question mark and the radio buttons checked. That means it's been rewarded. And these will this will store all of the quests and all of the encounters that you've already gone through. So you can scroll back and say, that's right, we already had this encounter. I'm sorry, but you've already been awarded experience. Let's do the same with the bounty hunting quest. Look at that. It took the 500, divided it up, 125, and then it added 125 more onto the, the party sheet for everyone. Man, awesome stuff. I mean, it takes care of the legwork for you. So that's the party sheet. And last but not least, here is the combat tracker, which we've already got open. You just click on the double swords, and the combat tracker does a lot. This is where it does your attacks. You can do attacks there, damage. It'll auto-calculate everything for you. You drag your players in there. Let's drag all four players in there. There we go. They should uh, appear down there at the bottom. Look at that. On your character sheet for Breeze, we can we can go ahead and hit the initiative button, Sun Roll Initiative. You can see Breeze, he'll he'll move automatically. Look at that, he had a 17 initiative, so he goes up towards the top. So it gives you your initiative roll in a column, your total hit points, any kind of temporary hit points that you may have uh, from maybe drinking a temporary hit point potion or maybe something from a necromancer. Here's a wound column, Fantasy Grounds takes... Uh, your damage and adds up. So if you take seven damage, that means that you have seven wounds. And then if you have 33 hit points, then you'll still have 
quite a few hit points left. So uh, here's some, some things over here. Here's your, your targets, basically. You can control click on, on a map. You can, you know, and, and there's, there's a more in-depth tutorials on, on the combat tracker, the party sheet, etc. But this is just an overview showing the, the possibilities of this. Now, uh, like I said, you can, you can take a map, and we'll take our first battle map here. We've already got a grid on it. We'll close our character selection. We don't need that. Our images and maps, we don't need that anymore. We'll resize this, kind of keep it clean. Martha Stewart style, where everything's not overlapping and stuff. So we've got, uh, we'll delete our bear. And we'll say that we'll add Breeze on there. And Breeze will go into the box. You can see you can hover Breeze. We'll put a giant vulture here. Uh, we'll make it visible. Oh, which giant vulture? There it is. So the giant vulture is a large creature, two by two. And you can do your attack. So you can uh, take Breeze, say it's Breeze's turn. You can use the, uh, there's all of the monsters. Here's their stats, their ability scores. Here's all of their different attacks. You open up the weapon. This is their reach, their size. And here are a, uh, here's another button with sort of like birds flying around her head. These are conditions that you can take off. So uh, the combat tracker is really nice. We'll say that Breeze is going to attack the Vulture. He moves up. Let's open up Breeze's character sheet. And what kind of attacks does Breeze get? Let's see, he's got a dagger, a rapier, or a bow. Let's say he draws his rapier as he's running in. And you can do attacks a couple of different ways. There's no right or wrong way of doing an attack. There's three ways to attack, actually. The first way, you can just pick up the attack from your character sheet, drop it on the giant vulture, and there you go. It says your attack is a, a 10 at the giant vulture, and it's a hit. You can also take and drag and drop this attack if you'd rather drag and drop it onto vulture number three in the combat tracker. You can do that as well. Pick up your rapier attack, drop it on vulture three. Look at that. There's a crit. And the system will automatically figure out that you've got a crit. So your rapier is 1d8, and as a crit, you get another dice. Just pick up the, the dice, and you can drop it on the... the just like you can drop it in the combat tracker or on the map, we'll drop it on the map. And look, you drop two eights instead of one because the system automatically recognizes a crit. And I'm glad that crit happened. So now you can also, seeing that it's your turn, we'll put the, the turn here. Uh, you can go ahead and hold down control and you can click on the giant vulture. See, now it says you've got the giant vulture three targeted. Now, all you have to do is go onto your character sheet, and you don't have to drag and drop anything now. Just go to your Actions tab and click the Rapier Attack, double-click it, and voila, seeing that you have the Vulture targeted, it'll say 15, and that's a hit. And for damage, you can do the same thing. Look at that. Character sheet will keep track of how much ammo you have. If you're out of ammo, it'll tell you you're out. Uh, you can do all kinds of effects like Sneak Attack for the Rogue, all that other good stuff. You can keep track of your channel divinities. It'll do saving throws. You can give the monster saving throws, etc. There's so much usage in the, the combat tracker and the character sheets that are linked together. It's beautiful. Now, the, the other features here, uh, you can go ahead and uh, this tells you what round. Here's the recycle button. So if you want to go to the next round, just click it. It'll go to the top, and then it'll say round two or round three, et cetera. And if you go back into your options, remember, if you have the uh, initiative set, it'll change initiative every time, which is nice. Now these uh, friendly, neutral, and red skulls down here at the bottom are pretty nice. You can take these and drag them onto the map. And when you do that, it'll drag all of your friendly tokens on there. We don't have any neutral tokens, but if you wanna drag this encounter on there, just go ahead, drag those on there. And now you can go ahead and really quickly place these uh, monsters where you want them to be placed. You can tell your characters to place their tokens on the map to where they're in their marching order. And voila, by default, all of the monsters are invisible. And then you can click on the little eyes on, the, on, the, on each one here. 
So there you go. Here's the, the cultist named Amareth that says, Ha ha, welcome to my domain. And now you will be ate by all of my giant vultures. And if your giant vultures uh, just appear around them, which I love to do that from time to time with my players, you can do that and they'll all be default invisible. But when Amaroth says, Ah, oh, my vultures are here, voila, you can hit the eyeball up here at the very top where it says hide all NPCs or show all. And wow, now look at that. Your NPCs are totally surrounded and they're probably complaining that they didn't see them as they're walking into the room and you just say, he just summoned them. Roll initiative. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. So that's uh, pretty much just about everything. Here's a, another button here that is basically you can just pick up in the lower left hand corner you can pick this up and set it on anybody that you want to so if you want it to be breeze's turn just pick it up and voila say you're maybe they've got the elements of surprise and breeze wants to go first you can just drag the the uh, the ampersand well the, the the dragon and put it on breeze there's the next actor button which is your, helpful for your players or you that you can just switch turns so there you go just click that and it rifles through and then when you get through all of the all of the monsters when you get back to the top of the initiative order the round will change now here's a menu has all kinds of cool stuff here you can close the window you can go ahead and do a rest which is beautiful uh, very intuitive and the system recognizes short rest and long rest for all of the players that are in the combat tracker so if you've got all of your players they've burnt all of their spells they've used all of their hit dice heals you can do a short rest or a long rest and on a long rest they'll get back half their hit dice heals they'll be back at full hit points and everything is good to go their spell slots are reset they don't have to do it you can do that for them you can do a short rest as well which will allow them to use their hit dice heals and if they have any kind of uh, short rest features that they'll get back they'll get those back as well so beautiful also on the menu there is the, the the initiative so you can hit the initiative button and you can roll all the NPCs you can roll the PCs or you can clear all of the initiatives if you want to really nice next there is the uh, uh, the effects you can click on the effects and, and basically you can clear all the effects out of the tracker by doing that instead of clicking on each player individually and then last but not least there's delete from tracker so you can click that and it'll give you you can basically delete all of the bad guys or just you know the non-friendlies or the or, or the foes so we'll do that and look at that it gets rid of everything out of there and we just have our npcs back in a combat tracker and that's that's it everybody that's that's basically over the last hour and so we've basically clicked on every single thing within the fantasy grounds virtual tabletop and like i said everybody do not forget to wherever you are at within fantasy grounds always know that there are question marks in the upper right hand side of most of the interfaces to where if you click on that uh, if you click on that question mark it'll take you to that page in the fantasy grounds wiki and it will have everything step by step detailed if i was to do that we'd be here for hours so take advantage of the help buttons whether the question marks in every single interface so we've gone over everything macros the modifier boxes the dice the chat box the language filter all of the sidebar buttons on the right hand side how to put tokens in how to activate modules how to put in your custom maps how to import and export characters showed off the combat tracker and the usage of it we've showed the party sheet how to add experience how to add quest parcels how to add items to your and gold to your characters we've looked at all the different possibilities uh and the sidebar buttons everything from spells skills feats races classes backgrounds etc and like i said don't forget to take advantage of the help buttons and one final thing it also depends on what rule set you are using so there may be some buttons that you don't see in this video in another video but just hit the wiki button the help button and you'll be okay so there you go everybody I hope you guys enjoy this video 
Uh, Fantasy Grounds has a lot of awesome things that you can do. And the more that you use it, the more proficient that you're going to be and the more ways you're going to learn how to do things and the quicker you're going to become. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below. We do read the comments. We answer them if you have any questions. Please feel free to like the video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe or follow the Twitch channel and follow us on all the other social media outlets so you can get all of the scoops that we're announcing, all of the latest sales and new items, and all that other good jazz. So once again, everybody, I'm David with Fantasy Grounds. And until next time, happy gaming and keep using the program. Bye, everybody. Thank you.